So this video acts as my definitive story throughout the Pokemon games. I wanted to make this video throughout my free time over the summer as we all prepare for more information of Generation 9 with Scarlet and Violet to be revealed. Before I begin, I would like to make a couple disclaimers, though. Not everything in this telling is entirely historically accurate. I've played these games countless times, so I'm meshing together a lot of the memories and events from several different playthroughs. I won't be going through every single tiny event, either. Instead, this video will essentially be a verbal highlight regarding my teams of each generation and significant story moments by transitioning from one region to the next. Some of these events may also have altered story sequences just to make some thematic sense of my real-life aging and to enable consistent storytelling. Think of this somewhat as like a headcanon regarding my own Pokemon journey. Games that are different versions of one another, like X and Y or Black and White, I'm treating as one singular entity. Because I had access to both versions growing up, thanks to having a sibling with the opposite game, my experience of uh, version exclusives are pretty loose. I was able to get what I needed or wanted pretty much whenever I needed or wanted things. That said, I will try to stick with Pokemon from these specific games as much as I can, um, but the majority of my teams are made of just mutually exclusive Pokemon, so that's probably not going to happen as much. Lastly, most if not all of my Pokemon become fully evolved. As such, if I say I caught a Gyarados, just know that I probably mean Magikarp and spent most of my time with it evolved. Since I currently have the Pokémon evolved, I consider them to be their evolved species. Plus, this saves me the trouble of saying, oh yeah, by the way, this one evolved. There are two Pokémon in this entire uh, video that I do not evolve, um, so, and I'll specify that when we get to that. But anyways, with that out of the way, let's begin. We start out in Kalos. While X and Y were definitely not my first Pokemon games, they were the first games that I played while being heavily involved with the online community. So in that regard, they're my first fulfilled experiences. I began by choosing my starter, Castaner the Chesnut. Shortly after we catch Excipiter, the Talonflame, or also Axie for short. After defeating Viola, we set off to Lumio City, and we get Tortanks the Blastoise holding the Blastoise Eye. We then caught a shiny Honedge on Route 6 named Queen Steel. Following the defeat of Grant in Sillage City, the team welcomed Cthulhu the NK and Binga the Tyrant. On Route 10, up towards Geosinch Town, we welcomed our sixth member, River the Shiny Eevee. Since River was our seventh member, I ended up boxing Thulu the Malamar out a couple of times. Eventually, we made our way to Corina, defeating her and obtaining Lucerin, the Lucario. I would sometimes also rotate other Pokémon in and out too, but what you see here is the team that I primarily used. Despite the fact that this was the team that I would go on to win the Kalos League with, there were a handful of other memorable encounters as well. The first uh, main two to mention uh, was Blitz, the speed boost Mega Blaziken you get for pre-ordering the game, and Tenbu, the Simi Sage. Despite not catching it, I eventually got my hands on a shiny Froki egg that hatched and I named Proteus. All in all, we ended up finishing the Kalos League with 11 Pokemon. Chesnot, Talonflame, Blastoise, Aegislash, Malamar, Tyrantrum, Sylveon, Lucario, Blaziken, Simi Sage, and Greninja. The journey doesn't stop there. Next stop, Hoenn. Because I also want this to be somewhat realistic as well, I'm going to make it so each of my adventures take roughly a year in total length. That way, I and my Pokémon age along the way and make things feel more personalized too. So for Kalos, we'll say I started when I was 13, and started Hoenn when I was 14. Starting anew in Hoenn, I left all my Pokémon behind me with Professor Sycamore and Kalos. In Hoenn though, I befriended my new starter Pokémon, Leaf the Subtile. After receiving Leaf, I catch Avia the Swellow and Serenity the Gardenivore. These three Pokémon accompany me most of my journey through Hoenn. I get through Roxanne, Brawly, Watson, and Flannery. After Flannery, I catch a shiny Flygon named Spex and a Feebas named Calypso. After defeating the region with this team, I received a shiny Beldum from Steven. Despite not using them as much as my journey, I did catch some other Pokémon in Hoenn as well. A Ludicolo named Fiesta, a Shiftree named Jiraiya, a Breloom named Noggin, Slay King named Anthony, and an Exploud named Base. I then go back to Kalos to deposit my Pokémon. While back home, Sycamore develops the Megastone for my Sceptile. After Hoenn, I decide to venture to Kanto. At Kanto, I start my team with the Charmander I name Pyro. 
After defeating Brock with just Charmander, I catch a female Nidoran outside Pewter City who I named Regina. Both it and Pyro evolve shortly after. Eventually, I make my way to Misty and defeat her, then catching Fidget the Abra just north of Cerulean City. Moving onwards, I eventually catch Balboa the Machop down by Route 10 and Casper the Shiny Ghastly in the Pokémon Tower. With this team of five, I continue to obtain my other badges. Eventually, I receive the Lapras that I named Silk. I go on to defeat the Indigo League here and put a stop to Team Rocket. At the end of my journey, I return home to deposit my new team. Professor Sycamore gifts me with the Mega Stones for Fidget, Casper, and Pyro. Despite not using these, I did also catch a Nido King named Baltimore, Golduck named Rubix, a female Arcanine named Sophie, a female Golem named Sphira. I eventually do visit Johto, although since the events of that game take place two years after the events of Kanto, within the timeline, I decided to hold off. Instead, I go to Sinnoh. My starter in Sinnoh is Axel the Infernape. Shortly after befriending Axel, I catch a female Starly named Raptor and a female Badoo named Amorosa. I make my way between Rourke and Gardenia with these three Pokemon, then catch Dread the Gibble just south. With this team, I then defeat Crasher Awake and Fantina before catching Echo the Shiny Gliscor on Route 214. I also decided to visit the Safari Zone, that's right outside Crasher Awake's gym. This time around, the Safari Zone has said to be extinct Pokemon there from times of ancient past. It was here that I caught an Ursaluna named Dubmar, a male Basque Legion named Namu, a female Hisuian Arcanine named Roxy, and Shika the Hisuian Zorark. I then clear Brian and Candace and catch Thorion the Electabuzz just outside Sunny Shore City. I also received the Tokopi egg in this region, but it hasn't hatched yet. Finishing the Sinnoh League with this team of six, I return home to Sycamore to deposit my Pokemon. Like before, I also catch some Pokemon that I just didn't happen to defeat the League with. These Pokemon are an unevolved Weasel and Apon named Sprint and Top, respectively. I also caught another Lucario named Romulus and a shiny Rhyperior named Amber. Next up was Unova. As I began my Unova journey on my 17th birthday, I chose Roran the Oshawott as my starter. After defeating Silent, I obtained a semi Sage of my own. This one, different than the one I received in Kalos. This one was shiny, and I named him Elvis. With Roran and Elvis, I defeated Lenora and Berg, and then catch a vector of the Crocodile and Iroh the Darmanitan north of Castalia City in the Desert Resort. After then defeating the next two gems, I catch Landon the Shiny Conkeldor in the Cold Storage Facility. After defeating the rest of the gym challenges, I make my way to Victory Road, where I catch Cerberus the Hydreigon. Some other friends I made along the way include Swin the Stoutman, Toph the Female Excadrill, Bully the Seismitoad, Vaults the Golvantula, Remus the Zorark, Iris the Shiny Female Haxorus, and Jinx the Shiny Female Golder. I do decide to leave Romulus, Lucario, Tinbu, and Elvis in Unova for some special training. Upon defeating the Unova League, I returned back to Kalos for global news strikes after two whole years of Team Rocket's defeat. They're back. They've returned to Johto to cause more trouble. So, off to Johto I went. Upon my arrival to Johto, I receive Eruptus the Cyntaquil. Before the fight with Faulkner, the egg I received from Sinnoh hatches into a Togepi I named Cynthia, not only named after the champion of Sinnoh, but also the person who gave me the egg, who just so happened to be the champion of Sinnoh. After the two defeat Faulkner, we catch a Mareep and named her Tesla. After then defeating Bugsy and Whitney, we make our way to Goldenrod City where we are gifted with Noct, the shiny Eevee. Just north of Goldenrod, I catch Excel the Scyther. Now strapped with five Pokémon, I continue onwards, defeating Team Rocket and obtaining gym badges as I go. After I make my way to the Pokéathlon Dome, I receive the Metal Coat, although I don't quite use it yet to evolve Excel. After then defeating Morty and Shuck, I heal the Ampharos and battle Jasmine at Olivine City. On my way to Mahogany Town, I catch Meryl and Mount Mortar and name her Mochi. With my team of six set, Lance and I go calm the raging Shiny Gyarados and defeat Team Rocket. Now here, I don't think I should incorporate the Shiny Gyarados into my catches, since Lance seems to supposedly have it in other forms of media too. But so, after defeating Team Rocket, I evolve Excel with the Metal Coat and take on the, Mahog the Mahogany Town Gym. After that, I continue to challenge Claire, and then finish the rest of Team Rocket. Upon their defeat, I approach a very familiar victory road. 
and catch Damnian the Crobat. Being this close to the League, I switched Damnian out for Togekiss throughout some of the League battles. The only other new Pokémon I caught was Hiccup the Heracross here. After defeating the new Indigo League, I was invited to attend a high-leveled tour with Kanto, this time taking on the gym challenges once more in a competition against other trainers to become the official Kanto champion, which would mean I would dethrow Lance and or Blue. I deny the invitation and go back to Kalos. As five years have now passed since I started my journey, I decide to remain in Kalos for another year, resting and training with all of my Pokémon at Sycamore's lab. On my 20th birthday, though, I received an invitation to partake in a new challenge in a foreign region, Alola. The rules were simple. I defeat the seven trial captains' challenges, and I may battle my way to Alola's first ever champion. Due to the region of Alola being relatively new and not up to par with global communication, I actually received this letter significantly late. The challenge had already, had already been well underway within the region, however, I still went. I arrived in Alola and chose Robin the Rowlet as my starter Pokémon. This Robin ended up becoming my closest of all my Pokémon. While I have had strong bonds and friendships with all my Pokémon before Robin, Robin and I just had something intrinsically special. I catch myself a Pikachu I named Wahine, and a Rockruff I named Rylace. With these three Pokémon, I defeat the trials of Mele Mele and Akala Islands. Before moving to Ula Ula, I catch myself a female a shiny Salandit and a Galissapod. I name them Swars and Smugia, respectively. With my team practically set, I defeat the trials there and move on to Pony Island. I am going to shake things up differently here, though. During the wormhole events of Ultra Sun and Moon, I'd like Lusamine's scheme to actually work to some uh, capacity. Instead of doing whatever it was that she was doing, I forgot, using the power of the Ultra Beasts accidentally merges universes and timelines. Rather than use these universes colliding and causing some type of like cosmic threat, all of these universes actually blend and are compatible. This Prime Universe now, we'll call it, introduces the timelines and events from the games originally, and the anime as well. As such, Ash enters the fray and becomes Alola's first champion, instead of anyone else. Despite not becoming the Alola champion, I do end up catching several other Pokémon in the region as well. I catch a Vika Vault I name Nitro, a Midday and Midnight Lycanroc I named Riley and Ace respectively, a Wishy Washy I named Nemo, a Palo Sand named Sketch, and a Shiny Mimikyu I named Peekaboo. As I return to Kalos, I ended up meeting a Froakie who will not enter a Pokeball for the life of him or receive a nickname. I decide to keep him around and train him in Kalos only to find out that he has the special bond ability as a Greninja. Around the time of my 21st birthday, I decide to take an adventure off to Galar next. Here I choose Thumper the Cinder Ace as my starter, but soon after I receive an abandoned Grookey that I named Caesar. I eventually catch um, Simone the Corviknight and Moto the Orbeetle. After defeating Milo and Nessa with this team, I then catch a pair of Toxtricity, a male Loki and a female Amped named Goe and Mycy respectively. I alternate between these two and the two of my starters. Continuing on the rest of the league, I also defeat Kabu, Bay, Opal, and Gordy before catching another pair of Pokemon, Lucifer and Kronos the Grimmsnarls, the former of which being Shiny. After defeating Raihan, I catch a Dragapult that I named Spyro, and then decided to challenge the league while changing some of my duo Pokemon out. Caesar was mostly paired with Kronos and Goatye, while Thumper was mostly paired with Lucifer and Mycie. With this rotation, I challenged and won the Galar League. After winning, Leon had gifted me with a G-Max Charmander egg. The only other Pokémon I had caught in Galar was Lancelot the Surfetch. After another year of resting and training, I receive another invitation on my 23rd birthday. Ten years have gone by. I've defeated so many evil teams, accomplished so much, caught in so many Pokémon, won so many gym challenges. Whatever this invitation was, it would have to be big. It was. It was a world tournament, only with the best of the best. Plenty of friends and rivals I made along the way were going to be there. While I would love to get into it in this video, I feel like this is kind of long enough and I have said what I've wanted to say um, about my overall general Pokemon journey. 
So, I'd like to make a part two to this video where I talk about this tournament. This is a project that some friends of mine have actually been working on. Um, so, yeah, we're going to make a video about it coming up soon. See y'all.